Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, Lord Jesus, I do thank you so much, Lord, for your love to us, Lord, and Lord, the benefit of knowing you, Lord, and your salvation, Lord Jesus, your grace, Lord, and Lord, I thank you for the meeting thus far this morning, Lord. We've heard from you already, Lord Jesus, and the singing, Lord, the worship, Lord Jesus, and everything that's going on here today, Lord. I just, Lord, thank you so much, Lord. Lord God, thank you for all your saints that you brought here this morning, Lord Jesus, to hear your message, Lord. I give it into your hands now, Lord Jesus. Amen. You know, it's a, what a privilege it is to be able to stand just here on a Sunday morning and speak about somebody whom you love dearly. You know, we, we uh, I think at times we fail to understand really what Jesus has done for us, for each one of us, how he has given his life for each of us. And he's there for us every day, every minute, every second of our lives, that we can call upon him, we can go to him, we can speak to him, we can have fellowship with him, we can sit with him, we can lie down, you can stand and tap your head, whatever you want to do. Jesus is there, you know, and I think sometimes we come to church maybe and come to meetings, church is the, the people, but we come to meetings and, you know, and sometimes we kind of lose sight of who's here, we lose sight of the power that's here in our midst. And today is no different, you know. We come this morning and Christ is here. Jesus Christ is here, you know. And uh, the power that's here in our midst, we fail to see that sometimes, you know. We fail to acknowledge Jesus Christ for whom he really is, you know, for who he really is. And, and I just want to thank him in my own life for what he has done for me. And I'm sure in your lives too, you know as you think on things and your past and you know where you've come from and things that have happened to you and things along the line and you begin to think that it's all Christ it's all Jesus but for him I wouldn't be here but for him none of us would be here none of us would be here this morning now I'm mindful of the fact that today is our healing meeting so I have I just want to speak uh, a little bit on, on healing this morning not um, you know um, a long message by any means but you know I just want to speak on Christ of Jesus this morning and uh, I want to read from Mark chapter 2 and this is a story that you all know it's about the paralytic that was brought before Jesus and I've spoken on this before but from a different angle I've spoken on it from the angle of the the stretcher bearers today I want to look at it from a different uh, a different view into it and in chapter 2 starting at verse 1 it says and again he entered Capernaum after some days and it was heard that he was in the house immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them not even near the door and he preached the word to them and they came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. Then, he saw, then G, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise, take up your bed and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And immediately he arose. Now here was a house, and Jesus was in the house. And there were four men bringing a guy on a stretcher to Jesus. And they couldn't get into the house because of the crowd that was in the house. 
around the house, everywhere in the house. They just couldn't get through. And there was no way that these people were going to move out of the way to leave these men being, bring this man on a stretcher in. And who were those people that were sitting around? Well, if we go to Luke, uh, Luke chapter 4, you don't have to turn to it if you like. There's only a few verses there. And uh, Luke chapter... Luke chapter 5, actually. Luke chapter 5, starting at verse 17. And it's talking about the same, the same story, the same day. And it says, Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by. So there were Pharisees there and teachers of the law. These were men who knew the law, who knew the, 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 the scriptures, sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Them. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. So there was healing for the Pharisees, healing for the teachers of the law, sitting by who had come from every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. The power was there because Jesus Christ was there. Because everywhere Jesus is, the power for healing is. Now sometimes I think we forget that. We think that you have to have a special meeting or a special man or a special woman has to be there. You need Jesus Christ in the meeting and when Jesus Christ is there, the power for healing is there. Of course, we all know that it is up to the Lord about healing. And then it says, Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And here we have the same thing as it said in Mark. And when they had, could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst before Jesus. And it says, when he saw their faith, the faith of the four guys, it wasn't the faith of the fellow and the, and the stretcher, it was the faith of the four guys who brought him. And I think that's tremendous encouragement for each one of us because you can bring somebody else to Jesus and it's you based on your faith that the power moves. You know, I believe that Jesus Christ is here this morning whether you believe it or not, you know, I really do. I believe that the power for healing is here this morning. I believe that Jesus Christ wants to set people free this morning. Jesus made a profound statement, you know, he was the only man in history to say it. He was the only man in history to back, that could back it up. And that was, you can find it in John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32, where he said, he said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The truth shall set you free. What is the truth? We see here when Jesus, when the, the crowd, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law were in the house, and they were all crowding, keeping the man who really had faith to come before Jesus. They were keeping him out, blocking him out. And here they were. And Jesus said that. And it says that Jesus, now this is the greatest miracle worker that ever walked the face of the earth. This is the greatest miracle worker that ever was, that ever is, and that ever will be. And here was an occasion for him to do miracles. Here was an occasion for him just to perform miracles. But first of all, what did he do? He preached the word to them, it says. He preached the word to them. Jesus says himself in Luke 4.43, he said, I was sent to preach the kingdom of God. For that reason, I was sent. He didn't say I was sent to do miracles. I wasn't sent to set people free. I was sent to preach the word of God. And unless the word of God is preached then the truth will not be made known to mankind who need to hear it because it's the truth of the word of God that sets you free. And you come to a place in your life, and I have something in my pocket today. 
that I haven't used for a long, long time. And it's a little set of handcuffs. You know? I haven't used them for many a day. But I want to tell you something. That that little key, you know, that little key is the key that opens these handcuffs. And it's the truth of the word of Jesus Christ that sets people free. There are many people today, I believe, you know, many people here this morning who are handcuffed to different things in their lives. They need to be set free. And the only one to set you free is Jesus Christ. He's the only one, brothers and sisters. The truth of the gospel. Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me. Do you believe that? No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus says you cannot be saved unless you go through the cross of Jesus Christ. It's the blood on the cross that saves you. It's Jesus' death on the cross. He rose from the dead. And when we are in baptized, we are being baptized, we go down into the water and it's a picture. What a beautiful picture of resurrection. You go down, you're buried with him, you come back up to new life. New life. Remember the marriage at Cana. Remember the marriage at Cana and they came to Jesus, they had a problem, they ran out of wine. What did he tell them to do? He said, fill the water jars. These water jars were rotten inside in them. He didn't say, go first and clean them out. He said, fill the water jars. These were used for ceremonial cleaning. They washed their feet in them and they washed their hands before the ceremonies. Jesus said, fill them with water. And then he said, go and now pour it out to the guests. And they said, it was the finest wine that they ever drank. And it came from a dirty jar. When the Holy Spirit is poured into each one of us, we weren't clean. I wasn't anyway, maybe you were. It was poured, the Holy Spirit, the picture of the water, that's a picture of the Holy Spirit being poured into a dirty water jar like myself. And then the Holy Spirit begins to do his work within. And from our mouths and from our lives comes forth the best wine that we can give out to the nation. You can give out to worldwide. You can spread the word of God because it comes forth from a jar that has been made clean by the washing of not what was in it before, but by what in, went into it, the water, the Holy Spirit, that makes you clean. Therefore, it is a, a, it is a, a terrible thing that you hear coming from, coming from the mouth of some Christians who have been filled with the Holy Spirit, who have been washed clean, that from them come, come profanities, come people using the name of Jesus in vain, people using curses as they come forth from their mouth. I tell you something, if that's happening in your life, then there's more than the Holy Spirit in there. It has to be washed clean for in order for this cleanness to come forth so that this wine can be drank by your neighbors and by your friends and by your workmates so that they can be set free and come to know that the truth really does set you free. The truth of the gospel sets you free. And if you want to be free today, I believe the power of Jesus Christ is in our midst and he's here for healing. He's here to set you free. He's here to make you a new man, a new woman, so that you can come and let the refreshing of the Holy Spirit flow out of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what it's all about, brothers and sisters. Let's go to, let's go to another place in Scripture. Let's go to Matt chapter 6. And here we see something really, really interesting. And here we have in Matt chapter 6, Jesus is coming home. This is a homecoming. There is no party though. There's no party. Jesus is coming back to the place where he grew up. He's coming back to the place where he fellowshiped with his, he, his friends growing up. Where he went to school where he worked in, in the carpentry shop of Joseph, his father. He's coming back to that place, and here he is, and this is what happens. Sorry, it's uh, chapter 6 of Mark, verse 1. Then he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him? That such mighty works are performed by his hands. Is this not a carpenter, the son of Mary? Now in those days, you would be known by your father. 
they would say are the son of Joseph, the son of this one, the son of that one. You would not be known by your mother. Now some scholars believe that Joseph may even have been dead at this stage. Other scholars believe that Jesus was looked upon as being an, illeg an illegitimate child because Mary went to visit Elizabeth and she came home pregnant. Joseph wanted to divorce her, but an angel came and said no. And here we have the, once he, the people he grew up with, and that's in the son of Mary and brother of James, Jose, Judas, and Simon, and there are not his sisters here with us. Now these were his half-brothers and his half-sisters. So he had a family. He had half-brothers and half-sisters. Why would they have brothers and half sisters? Well, they had the same mother and a different father. They, they, their mother and father were Mary and Joseph. Jesus' mother was Mary, but his father was God. So they were his half brothers and half sisters. And then Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. How disheartened he must have felt. And look at the next line, he says. Now he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Their unbelief. He was astonished at their unbelief. There is another place in scripture where it talks about the centurion who came to Jesus to heal his servant. And Jesus also marveled at his belief, not at his unbelief, at his belief, because he said to Jesus, I'll paraphrase it, you don't have to come to my house, just say the word and he will be healed. And that's what happened. Here he says, he, he didn't say he would not do many mighty works, he, he said he could not. He was hindered. The power of healing was hindered by unbelief. That doesn't mean if you're sitting in the meeting this morning and you're the only one here that believes in the power of healing, in the power of deliverance, in the power of being set free, that doesn't mean that you won't be healed. No, it's the ones who don't believe. It's in them that the power is hindered. The one who believes God's power is never limited. God's power is never hindered in someone who believes and it says he laid his hands on a few people there were only a few people here in this town who came to him believing that he had the power that he said who, who he was they believed him and they came and he they laid their hands on him and the same thing was happening in the house with the pharisees and the people who taught the law the religious the righteous they thought they were they had read all these books don't get me wrong now here some people take me up on this don't get me wrong they done courses they done this they done everything they went through college they did everything they learned it all from books you got to learn it from christ i'm telling you you got to learn it from jesus you got to sit with him and let him teach you if you don't brothers and sisters you become head knowledge and that's no good it's useless it's useless because what will come forth from you then is all knowledge it's all physical knowledge you need spiritual you need to drink it in you need to take in the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it's the truth that sets you free nothing else nothing else there is nothing can open these handcuffs you cannot break them they're solid they're not from a tie shop they're solid the only thing that can open them is this key the only thing that can set you free is Jesus Christ. And I believe with all my heart. I believe and I've ached about this all the morning. Since early last night, since early this morning, I woke up with a ache in my heart because I believe that Jesus Christ is here today. And I believe that he wants to set there's somebody here who was uh, just like a bag of spuds up on their back. And they're trying to get rid of them. And they don't know what to do. Jesus Christ wants to take that bag and he says, I want to set you free. But do you believe it? Do you believe it, brother, sister? Do you believe it? 
Do you believe that there's somebody today in our midst who has the power to set you free, who has the power to set your loved one free, that you can come and bring whoever it is on that stretcher and lay them before the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, I stand before you believing for my child, believing for my parent, believing for my family, believing for whatever it is. I stand before you, Lord, believing for myself that you will set me free, Lord, that you will deliver me, Lord, out of the hand of Satan, Lord I for long Lord I have dwelt there Lord but no more Lord Jesus I stand before you today Lord and I want to be set free Lord I want it Lord breathe fresh air into my lungs Lord Jesus I want to take in the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ it's like fresh air when you breathe it in you know it does something to your physical being to your spiritual being to every your mental being it's like a well welling up within you I want to tell you something brothers and sisters when you get to that place and the truth of Jesus Christ comes alive in your life the things that will come forth from your mouth are profound you will speak the word of God with authority you know when Peter and uh, John were they spoke with boldness they said and they said the people came and they realized these were uneducated men these were untrained men where did they get all of this and then they realized oh they've been with Jesus they've been with Jesus when you've been with Jesus I tell you change happens in you Things begin to happen in your life. You begin to see things that you never saw before. You begin to understand the word of God as he speaks through the Holy Spirit into your life. You begin to see that this baggage that you've been carrying for years, you've got to let it down. You've got to make a decision in your life. I want today to be the day that you make that decision, that you say, no more will I carry this baggage. No more, Lord. This is it, Lord Jesus. I lay it down today before your feet, Lord, and I take upon myself the truth of the word of God that tells me I'm a new creation and I no longer dwell in the past. You don't have to live there, brothers and sisters. You don't have to live in the past. The enemy will come against you and he will trouble your mind and he will throw every dark thought from the past into your head. He'll tell you you're useless. He'll tell you Jesus doesn't love you. He'll tell you you can't be a new person. He'll tell you you're no good. He'll tell you everything that's wrong in your life. He'll bring up the thoughts from the past, the things that came to hurt you, the things that came, all the discrepancies, everything in your life, all the guilt, all the hurt, everything, everybody he sets you, you, you're a victim of this and you're a victim of that. You don't have to listen to him. I tell you something, Jesus said to the man on the stretcher, he said, arise, get up, and the man arose immediately, it says. You know, there are many people who would rather lie on the stretcher. They want to stay there. It's a crutch. They want to stay there. I want to say to you this morning, and I've been ache in my heart about this, you know. I've been ache in my heart since I thought about this, what, a week ago, many days ago. I want to tell you something that the Lord Jesus Christ wants to set you free. He doesn't want you to dwell in the past anymore. He doesn't want you to dwell in that pit anymore. You know, when Jesus came and he spoke to the prodigal son, he spoke to him in a pigsty. And he set him free from a pigsty he set him free you know some people think that it's humiliating when you begin to obey the word of God they think it's humiliating you know how how humiliating it would have been when God said march around the walls of Jericho but Lord if they don't come down like we're, we're going to be the laughing stock of the place but because you say it will do it Peter Throw down the nets out there. We'll go out a bit there, Peter, in the deep waters, and we'll put down the nets. But, Lord, we've been at it all night, and we caught nothing. We caught nothing, Lord. But, Lord, because you said it, I'll do it. And they caught so many fish that they had to call help from the other boats. Standing on the, the, the shore of the Red Sea of the Jordan, and the people are crying out to God and crying out to Moses and Moses, his heart is broken from him. You know, I was thinking this morning, poor Moses, he, Jeremy said last week, Pastor Jeremy, about he struck the rock twice like, you know, I'll tell you something, I would have beat it. You know, really like, you know, because, you know, with what he had to put up with like, you know, really, you know, when you're listening to this and that and the other thing like, you know, I would have beat it really. But you know, the thing about it is that like, you know, when they stood there and, and they cried out to God and God said, Moses, he says, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people, move forward. That's all they had to do, move forward. Get up off the stretcher, you know, get up. 
go home. You know, that's all he had to do was arise and he arose. And I just want to tell you this morning, the same word of God, the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that which sets you free. Jesus came and he died on a cross for every one of us. There's nothing else he can do. John said it this morning. There's nothing else to be done. He's the only sacrifice. The only sacrifice. He's the only one that can back up the claim that says the truth will set you free. There's no other man in history. I don't care where you're from. I don't care who you know. I don't care what book you've read. There is nothing that you can say that can back up what God says, what Jesus says. There is no one can come and say your sins are forgiven. There is no, that man lay on the stretcher. People will say he didn't repent of his sin and yet Jesus forgave. I believe, you know, I believe with all my heart as I have focused on this for so long. I believe that Jesus came and he looked into that man's eyes. And I believe that he saw something in that man's eyes that only he could see. He could look at it with a godly eyes and he saw a broken man. He saw a broken, he can see a broken woman, a broken man right here this morning. And as he looked into that man's eyes, I believe he saw something that caused him to say, your sins are forgiven you because he knew that that's what the man needed to hear and he knew that first of all you got to deal with the sin and then you can deal with the healing and then he didn't ask him what was wrong with him he didn't say is it your leg or your hand or your back or what's wrong with you how, how come you're here before me what, what can you do he says arise is to take up your bed and go home that's all he said and the man arose and he did what Jesus said you know, we're great, we're, we're really like, we want Jesus, like if Jesus went to any one of us here this morning and said, what can I do for you? He'd say, well, you know, you'd give me a list probably, you know, and everything like that. And if he said, you, okay, that's fine. He said, no, he says, you go home. And what I want you to do, is he says, you want to, I want you to walk around the park 10 times. Would we complain? We might, you know, we might. And the 10 time you go around it, he said, then I want you to shout out at the top of your voice. be humiliating wouldn't it really like you know we might want to do it but that's what it comes down to we've got to do what Jesus tells us to do we've got to be obedient to people you know when we say we read the word do we read it to take it right into our hearts or do we read it like a book and say we go from page to page or we pick out a page here today this morning and then we open another page tomorrow morning you've got to read it like one story you start to the start and you go right through it's one whole story and it starts at the beginning and the whole lot and it leads from, from creation right up to revelation and it's all talking about Christ right up right up to the very end and it's all a story about Jesus it's a story about love it's a story about forgiveness it's a story about being set free it's a story about deliverance and everything that's in here is the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ that he spoke about that there is no man can do but Jesus Christ when he says I set you free I'm here to set you free I'm here to deliver you. I'm here to do what no man can do. I'm here to do a work in your life that only I can do. You know, I've often prayed with people, and I know as I prayed with them, they're not believing. They're not believing the prayer. It isn't the prayer, you know, that heals you. It's Christ that heals you. It's him that heals you. The prayer, when I pray with somebody, I love to listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling me, and I pray those words. But I can see it in lots of people that you're not believing, you know. And how the prayer works, I really honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. But I believe that it's Jesus who does the healing. It's not me. It's not the man. It's not the woman. You know, I'm nobody. I'm just the one who brings a message. But he's the one who does the healing. Do you believe in him? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe that he can set you free? Do you believe that right at this very moment he's here in this building this morning? Church, he wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. Now, because of social distancing and because of the light, we cannot bring you up and pray with you. But if you want healing this morning, I pray that you would stand and we will just stretch our hands towards you. Whoever you are, you can all stand up. One can stand up. If you believe that Jesus Christ is here this morning, and that the power for healing is here, that the power for deliverance is here, that the power of the word of God is here, then I pray you stand up and receive it. Believe it. Believe Jesus Christ. Believe him for what he has done to set you free. Amen.